exhaling out. Pausing here, breathing normally. So inhaling and exhaling without effort. And just a chance here to notice where you're at, how you're feeling today. We try to hold the and, and I've been holding that a lot lately. I'm feeling centered and I'm also at times feeling a little elevated. And it's okay to have both of those going on in your life at the same time. In fact, we welcome that. It's one of the things we practice when we're practicing our yoga, the and. It's rarely either or. If this mudra speaks to you again, you can use it any time during the day. Often we'll hold it for three to five minutes. If all of this sounds like a bunch of bunk and you know I always offer this up, let it go. It doesn't resonate for you and leave it for now. One more deep inhale and exhale. We're going to let our hands come on down by our sides. We're going to warm up shoulders. We're going to warm up hips a little bit. So I'm going to ask you to take a pretty wide stance. Toes are going to point out and we're going to get pretty flingy here. So we'll let our arms start to fly and we'll twist. So I do have a few of my veterans on here, which I don't tend to get very woo woo. And I like to <laughs> give a heads up to my veterans. Oh, we're in full woo tonight. So what we're doing here is actually balancing out our chakras along the spine, those seven main chakras that start at our pelvic floor and go right to the top of our head. Physically, we're releasing low back. If you've been in a chair all day, this is a great way to really start to release that back and to release the shoulders. We'll do a couple more. And then I'd like you, if you will, just to bring those hands down. We bring those four fingers back between the toes. So if we're looking down, feeling those planted feet, that heaviness and that deep pressure in those feet. We'll start some shoulder rolls. Big shoulder rolls are exaggerated unless you get lots of information about clicking or soreness. And if that's the case, maybe you're just shoulder shrugging. And then we'll reverse that. And then taking arms, you're gonna reach them out into a T. And remember when you were a little kid and you used to do the airplane. Letting your knees and hips move as they need to. We're gonna twist one direction and then we'll come back through center and twist the other. So you can go as fast or as slow as you would like. I do like to mention if you're looking at me and you are a person who tells your right and left from visual cues, your right is here to the weeds, as I'm calling them here in the corner, and your left is to the flowers that are on my table over here. Just a couple of more. We're gonna add in a little more movement. We'll come back through center, and we're gonna take our hands and clasp them. I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. I have my thumbs and index finger up open, and then the other fingers are clasping, and I'm gonna reach them overhead and step back so you can see me just a little bit better. So from here on your exhale, we're going to go to the right, leaning over to the right, but trying to reach those fingertips as if you could touch the right wall. We inhale, come back through center and exhale, twist or not twist, sorry, we reach over to the right, inhaling through center, exhaling and inhaling through center, exhaling. We'll let those hands come down. We're gonna do just a little shoulder opener here. Our football goal are 90 degrees. And careful here, I'm turned sideways. We wanna make sure we actually have a tailbone tuck. Instead of letting that whole upper body spill forward, we wanna tuck our tailbone and squeeze our shoulder blades together. So we're firing up some shoulder muscle, but we're also stretching this heart center. If you have spent the day over a computer board, or looking at a monitor, this is a great opener. We'll bring hands down. I'm gonna take my right hand that's closest to the weeds. It comes behind my back. I'll take my left ear to the left shoulder, stretching this whole relationship from the top of the shoulder to the back of the ear. 
and noticing while we're doing all this upper body stuff, what's happening with the feet and legs? Have you locked out knees? Can you soften knees? Can you let go of the tension in the low back and maybe even the buns? We'll rise back up through center. We're gonna switch sides. So now it's the left side, side closest to the flowers. We drop our right ear over towards our right shoulder or towards the weeds side of my room. Breathing fully here. Breath is one of the ways we regulate our central nervous system. It's also a signal that we might be overdoing something. So if you're feeling like you're out of breath, we wanna take it back just a few notches. We'll come on back through center. Reaching arms back up, we're gonna go through our half sun salutation. So as we exhale, soft bent knees, arms reach wide, rounding down. Some of us are gonna reach thighs, some of us are gonna reach shins or maybe the floor. We'll inhale to halfway lift, stretching that low back. Exhale, release back down. Arms reach wide again, inhale, rise back up. Exhale, hands come to heart. Inhale, fingertips reach. Exhale, soft bent knees. If it's part of your practice to do a swan dive, go for it. We're gonna inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release back down. Arms reach wide, inhale, rise up. And exhale, hands come back to heart one last time. Inhale, fingertips reach. Exhale, soften knees or a swan dive as we come forward. We're going to inhale to halfway lift. And some of us are going to be down at shins and some of us are going to be down at thighs. From here, I'm going to leave my right hand on my right shin and I'm just going to twist to reach my arm up towards the ceiling. Now, a few of you might be reaching all the way to the floor. A few of us actually might be a little bit higher with hand at waist as we twist. We'll come back down wherever you've chosen to be. Both hands press in. We still have that flat back. We're going to do the opposite side. I'm going to end up turning away from you as we twist to look up at the ceiling. Any height here that makes sense for what you're working with in your back. We'll bring the hand back down. Both arms reach wide as we inhale to rise back up. Exhale. Hands come to heart. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, soft bent knees, arms reach wide. We find where we would like to press into halfway lift. We hold the lift and then we leave the right hand on the right leg and we twist to open up. Pausing here for three breaths. Full deep breaths in these twists, a little more challenging. If you feel out of breath, you can always bring the hand down, but keep your twist. You can rest it right at the crease of your thigh. One last time, we'll bring the hand down and we'll just switch sides. So opening up now, inhaling and exhaling. Two more breaths. Inhaling and exhaling. Last time, deep inhale. As we exhale, hands come down, softening the knees pretty significantly. I'm gonna go ahead and grab hold of my opposite elbow with my palm. So I'm here just hanging out. Some of you might like to rock side to side if that makes you dizzy. Just leaving your head right here in the center. Give your head a good nod, yes. And a big shake, no. Two more breaths here. That sense of opening up through that torso, that mid thoracic, that shoulder blade area. And we're gonna transition to the floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and have you bring your hands down, knees come down into tabletop. We don't have to get there in any fancy way. When you're ready, take a moment to tuck your toes. So tucking toes is difficult because you've got some arthritis in those joints. Don't tuck your toes, just leave them pointed. But when we tuck the toes, we once again are putting some deep pressure on those feet. We've got deep pressure in our palms. We're gonna do an active cat cow and it's gonna kind of go into a less active cat cow. So the first thing we're gonna do is press our mat away from us. I round my back and I'm gonna send my hips back towards my heel. And then it's like I'm a cat pulling myself forward. My belly drops. I let my elbows bend, maybe I look at the top of my mat. 
I exhale, press to round, tucking tail, pressing back to those toes, and inhale, draw myself forward. Yourself right through those thumbs last time this way. Exhale. Inhale, draw through. We'll let those toes go, planting toes. We stay put now in tabletop and we simply move our spine. So I'm gonna exhale to round, nod my chin, look through my thighs. And as I inhale, I start to let my belly drop. I might look at the top of my mat. I might even look up towards my screen depending on how my neck feels about that. Let's do three more of those. Exhale, great stuff to get that spine more mobile one of the most effective ways to get your spine a little bit more mobility. We'll do this one more time. Exhale to press. Inhale to let belly come down. Coming back to neutral spine, I'm gonna ask you to come down to your elbows. So we're on these in elbows. My hands are reaching straight out from my elbows. They're not necessarily clasping. I'm going to tuck my toes and lift my tail up towards the ceiling. Now, if that's very intense through shoulder stuff, we leave the knees on and we just shift our weight back towards our heels, a lot like that first cat cow we did. Breathing here in our dolphin, getting some stretch through those arms, a little bit of release through the shoulders, and of course, we might feel that in the back of the legs. Softening knees if you're feeling it fairly intensely in the backs of those knees or legs. One more breath here. When you're ready, come on back down to knees. We're gonna press back into a version of child's pose. So for some of us, we can get those hips back towards the heels. We can rest the head, might even stack fists. For those of us whose knees don't agree to that, we stay on elbows, knees, and let our head drop through. Taking five breaths here. As I mentioned at the beginning of class, this practice is really meant to wind us down from our day. Child's pose is considered to be one of the restorative poses in yoga and restoring in a way that is stretching, opening physically, but restoring energy as well. So if we've used a lot during the day, this is a great way to kind of regain it. Let's do one last breath. When you're ready, we're gonna rise up to tabletop. I'm gonna take my right foot, so your right foot is gonna come forward between the hands. And for some of us, reaching the floor is really tricky. So what you might find is you're right up on knees. A few of you might be able to get those hands to the floor. A few of you might be able to get both hands inside the foot. We're gonna take that back knee and walk it back. We would like to feel a fairly deep stretch in the crease of your hip. So any place that makes sense, you might be knee, you might be framing the foot, hands might be inside. Thinking about breath here, fully breathing, that reminder to breathe. When we have a deep stretch, the body loves to hold the breath. So we always get those ideas of reminding ourselves, don't forget to breathe, don't forget to breathe. We'll do one more breath here. When you're ready, we're gonna shift weight to the back knee. So I start to straighten my front leg. And once again, some of us, this is a bit more of a balance. You can walk that foot a little closer to the edge of your mat. Might bring hands here. A few of us might be hands down. We start to straighten the leg as much as it'll straighten. It's not important to get it straight. There may be a few of you, after I saw the list, that might sit all the way back on the heel and fold forward. As my veterans know, I often say, we'll do this next week. So <laughs> if that one doesn't work for you, we find the space that stretches the back of that front leg in any place that works for you. Breathing fully here. Those hamstrings low back get really tight if we're seated all day. They get really tight if we're standing all day. 
When you're ready, we're gonna shift forward to the front knee. Plant the hands, we're gonna do our first down dog. So know that you don't have to go in down dog. You can go back down to elbows and knees. You can also come into child's pose. If you're doing down dog, we're gonna bend those knees, press our heart back towards our thighs. It's more important to have a long spine than straight legs. Two more breaths here. When you're ready, come down to knees. That opposite leg coming forward now. I think it's your left leg. It should be your left leg coming forward. <laughs> As we're here, we might decide we need to be a little bit higher. We can frame the feet or come inside. That back leg walks back just a little bit further. So we're opening that front crease of the thigh. Lots of stuff happening there. That is the convergence of a lot of connective tissue. So our quads, the four muscles of the front of our thigh, but also two muscles that connect the front of the body to the low back, the psoas, the iliopsoas. Breathing fully here, noticing this side compared to the other. We'll do one more breath. And then we begin to make that shift. So we straighten that leg as much as it'll go. We might step up to the knee. Hands might be on the floor. There may be a few of you who end up with hips back at heel, folding forward for that full hamstring stretch. Softening as much as you can through those shoulders. Softening through that low back. One more deep inhale and exhale here. When you're ready, shifting forward, either down dog, dolphin, or child's pose, we press back. This time we're gonna run the dog. So if you are resting on knees, you're gonna give your tail a little wag. If those legs are straight, we're bending one knee and then the other. So we're getting some calf and Achilles stretch here. That Achilles tendon in the back of your heel. We're gonna to begin to go through a flow. Options are not to do the flow at all. You might come back into child's pose. We're gonna get there eventually. If you do wanna go through your flow, we'll shift forward to plank. You can stay there. You're gonna see me drop to knees to protect neck and back injury. I'm gonna lower all the way down. And I'm gonna inhale either into low cobra or up dog. We all meet back in child's pose. This time with our child's pose, we're gonna walk our hands off to the right side of the room towards the weed side of the room here. So we feel some opening through that side body. We'll come back through center, walking over to the left side, the flower side of the room. We'll come back through center, rising back up to tabletop. So I'm gonna face you now so you can see where I am headed. I'm gonna take my right foot and bring it forward. My right foot comes forward. My back knee stays on, but I'm gonna take my right foot and I'm gonna walk it out so my toes are turning out. And if possible, both hands come inside that foot. Now, once again, we might be lots of different places. We might be right here. We might have hands on. A few of you might go down to elbows. We're now opening that inner thigh. So we might even roll out to the pinky toe. I'm gonna do the medium level here with palms on. If you're able, we're gonna bend in and out of that front knee. So we're gonna feel a little more intensity through that inner groin area. Bending in and out of the front knee. And then we'll come back through, taking that knee. It comes back to join the other. We're gonna give our tail a wag. 
We'll bring your left foot, the foot that's closest to the flowers forward. For my gentlemen in the crowd, often what happens is you gotta swing that sucker wide and throw it forward. That's how your hips are built. So that's okay if it has to inch its way forward. Back leg is long, knee is resting, hands in appropriate place. We're gonna walk that foot out. We might even roll out. We might be on thigh, palms, or down to elbows maybe rocking in and out of that front knee. Lots of opening here through that hip structure. If you were with me last week, we did some, or sorry, not even last week. Gosh, what day is it? <laughs> Yesterday, we did some hip openers. We're gonna come back through into our tabletop. We shake our tail again. And this time I'm gonna ask you to come into a seated position. If you have a strap, your magic ring, or that towel nearby, go ahead and grab that. For some of us, seated on the floor is not very comfortable. If you have yoga blocks, grab them. If you have a pillow nearby, it's okay to sit on that or a blanket. We're gonna sit crisscross. If crisscross is tough, a few of you might be what we call a turtle, where the knees are bent, the feet are wide, and you're kind of hanging out here, or I used to call the coaches meeting. So I want you to notice, if you're crisscross, what leg you have on the outside. And I'm going to ask you to change it. So legs cross the opposite way. It's going to feel weird. This is a little brain thing we do. And each time we switch up stuff that we're doing, <laughs> That is our normal way of doing it. Our brain has to work a little bit harder. So we're laying down the new gray matter maybe. Then I'm gonna ask you to reach your arms out towards your screen and clasp your hands. Once your hands are clasped, you know I'm gonna ask you to do it, switch it. You have a way that you prefer to clasp your hands. So we're gonna unclasp them, put the other thumb on top. Again, that's going to feel a little strange. We're going to do something called protraction and retraction. My arms stay nice and long. I'm going to try to push my knuckles into my screen. And then with those straight arms, I'm going to try to pull my shoulders back. I'm going to turn sideways. You might be able to see that a little bit better. So straight arms push forward. And I use my shoulders to come back, pushing forward and back. What we're doing here is working these muscles underneath your shoulder blades that hold your shoulder blades to your back and also a little bit of your rotator cuff. Let's go two more times. And pushing forward and back. Hands come to gently rest down by your side. If your hands don't reach the floor, no worries. We're gonna take and bend into our right elbow. So I'm just going to lean over here for a moment and it's giving me a little space to reach my right fingertips. They're going to hover. Once they're reaching, I again drop my right ear to my right shoulder to increase the stretch through the top shoulder area. So that lean, a little bit of opening of the body, that side body, the head resting over, the opening of that shoulder area. If it makes sense, you want to increase the stretch in your body, that side body, the arm can reach, it can go overhead. We want to make sure if we can that that opposite hip has stayed on. So left hip stays on. A few of you might end up with the elbow down on the floor to increase that stretch. A few of us might be a little more upright just because of hip structure or back structure. Let's swing around. We're going to switch sides. So we let that Left palm plant, we slightly bend the elbow, we lean towards the flower side of the room. Opposite hand's gonna reach and hover here. So fingertips are off. We let the left ear drop towards the left shoulder. Breathing fully here. So we have some fun muscles in our neck called scalenes, and they're these three tiny muscles. And they're really responsible for a lot, holding our head up, helping move our jaw, sternocleidomastoid, also part of that. They get really tight through the day. If you like, we can increase that stretch. These are great ways and gentle ways to stretch and open up those areas. 
Think about breathing into that space you've created. That opposite hip is staying on. We're gonna let those arms slide around. We're gonna change the cross of leg the way that we like it. So if you have your towel handy, I'm gonna ask you to grab that. You don't necessarily need your towel. I'm gonna to be turning away here in a moment so you can see what this looks like. So I'm gonna take my hand towel and I'm gonna bring it, my kitchen towel, I'm gonna to bring up my right hand and I'm just gonna let it slide behind my head. So it's gonna slide behind my head, my hand goes behind my neck, my right elbow is up towards the ceiling. I'm gonna take my left hand, it goes underneath. And I'm reaching for, as I turn away or at least turn sideways, I'm reaching for that towel to try to draw my hands closer towards each other. So as I grab those, hands and, or towel and get it a little closer towards each other, I'm gonna stay here and get some information. If it shoved my head forward, my hands are probably too close. We're trying to relax the neck here. We'll look away from your right arm. So we're gonna look over towards the floor, flower side of the room and then look down at your shoulder. This is a great shoulder opener to release stress of the day. For those of us who are feeling agitated and relaxed at the same time, remember we may have the and in there. If we're feeling agitated, we're holding a lot of stress in those shoulders. And this is a stretch again, you can do any time during your work day. I know I have some retired folks who are very active. This is also a great stretch to do if you are cycling. <laughs> I have a Tai Chi person on, a great way to release that as well. We're gonna release this pretty specifically. I'm gonna ask you just to look up at your screen. Hang on to your towel in your left hand, that low hand. And we bring everything out and we give it a little more stay in the time. I'm dating myself here, the bird. We're gonna take that towel, it goes high and that left hand slides behind your back. Right hand slides underneath. Letting those hands walk closer to each other. If you are a right-handed person, this is gonna maybe your fingers get a little bit closer on this side. Sorry, no, that's true. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> look away and then look down. If you've taken class from me, you know I can't tell my left from my right. So when I start tossing out, if you're right-handed, it always gets a little confusing. So pausing here to notice how does this side feel? I'm gonna add this little nugget in during this time of uncertainty. This is great for your immune system. So this particular stretch really helps squeeze and open and release stuff in your lymph nodes that travel through your neck, your shoulder, underarm area, and that front of the chest area. It's a closed system. It requires squeezing and releasing for stuff to move. One more breath here. When you're ready, doesn't matter which hand it's in now, we're gonna send those arms out, give it a little bit of flutter. And let those hands now, you can toss that towel off to the side, let the hands come down to rest. And if you can, give your torso a little wiggle like you were gonna hula hoop. And then settle into that seat for a moment. We're just gonna notice torso, shoulder, maybe even neck area as compared to when we began class, or maybe it's very obvious to you as how you spent your day. This observation and noticing of sensation is one of the ways we remain present, one of the ways we can stay in the moment. So just noticing how does the head feel on top of the shoulders? How does the space between your shoulder blades feel? Does it feel as if the heart is a little more open? Are the arms a little bit heavier? It's okay if none of that holds true for you. We're not really trying to create anything. We're just simply observing what is. We're gonna transition into a little bit of stretching here. So I'm gonna take my right leg that is closest to the weed side of the room. I'm gonna kick that leg out. My other leg stays bent. So I'm gonna keep that knee bent. 
Now, for my folks who, this is really uncomfortable to be seated here for this long, it's okay to relax on your back and to open up this right thigh a little bit differently where you're drawing it into your chest and just letting it float out towards your rib cage. For those of us who it's okay to be seated right now, we're gonna give a little twist towards that thigh. We might be in the full expression of our opening right here. We might be able to round forward a little further. Some of us are going to bring hands to floor. A few of us might get our nose down to the knee. You hear me say this often, the destination is the least important part of any yoga shape or pose. It's the journey. So we're not trying to get really anywhere. We're noticing how this feels in our back. We're noticing how it feels in the back of our leg, maybe our shoulders and we're changing it to the appropriate place where we can feel sensation of stretch, sometimes resistance or tension. Two more breaths here. With your next inhale, we're gonna rise up and do a little counter stretch. So I'm gonna take my left hand, it comes to my mat, I'm just going to reach my right arm up and lean into it. So maybe it goes further away. You might be able to get down to elbow. You might be a little bit taller, depending again on hip structure. So what feels good here for your counterbalance? So we'll rise back up and we're going to switch it out. So now I bend my right foot in, my left leg goes long. Again, you might be resting on your back, drawing your knee, that left knee into chest and letting it drop out just a little bit. We'll twist towards that leg and then we find our spot. Perhaps we're rounding forward just a bit. Maybe we get a little bit lower with hands on the floor. Perhaps we fold over. A few of you might be able to grab hold of toes. Breathing fully here. So we've got some back of the leg, low back opening up here and that low back area that we may feel in this particular twist and fold forward is really this area that creates a lot of our mystery low back pain, especially when, we've been, when we have been seated for a long period of time. So this twisting and folding forward is a great way to stretch that area, something called your QL, your quadratus laborum with a few other things thrown in there too. One last breath. On your inhale, let's rise up. We'll counterbalance that, placing the right hand down. Left arm can reach where it makes sense. Breathing into that space that you created. And then we'll rise back up through center. We're going to go ahead and bring both legs just straight out in front of us. Both legs straight out in front of us, give them a little windshield wiper. You can lean back on those hands. You might even have a little bouncing knee. Okay, so I wanna remind you, nobody can really see you. So we're about to get some jiggly thighs. <laughs> and this is really to bring some energy out of that sedentary part of our body, which is the yen part, and get it loosened up so it can travel into what we call the hara in yoga. So once you get your karate chop fingers, and we're gonna start with the tops of the legs. So I'm just gonna start to karate chop from the crease of my thigh down to my kneecaps. And then I work my way back up. And I'm gonna take them to the outside of my thighs, right at those hip structures, and work your way down. Now that might be a little more tender, that's usually IT band, iliotibial band stuff, so go nicely here be kind to yourself we don't want it to hurt so much that you don't want to do it here comes the fun one i'm going to sit my legs a little further apart i'm going to karate chop my inner thighs so i go from the crease of my thigh down to my knee and back up one of the most common tight areas of the body after all this stretching, we're also trying to get some stuff out of that tissue. Let it go into the bloodstream so we can let it go from the body. Slide your feet back together and just give it all a little bit of, as if you were washing it up. 
something else you can do while seated in these uncomfortable chairs at home where you're doing your work. One last series here seated. This can also be done reclining. We're gonna bring soles of the feet together. Soles the feet together comfortably. Now, some of us, again, not so comfortable in the hip socket. And if that's the case, go ahead and recline. We're going to end up there in a few minutes anyway. But if you are here and able to get the soles of the feet together, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, grab and hold your foot. I'm going to hold mine up. I'm going to go right underneath my second toe, right where I see a pigment change. So pressing right into there if my toes and my, the sole of my foot are accessible. So in acupressure, acupuncture, this is kidney one or the bubbling wellspring for my type two person. And this is how we can get grounded. It's one of the ways that we can really sort of come out of the ether when our, especially when we have the monkey brain and bring ourselves back, not only into, you know, this moment, but also this sense of grounding. So pressing in there lightly, that deep pressure again on the sole of the foot helps inspire that relaxation response. Pressing into kidney one, also a nice way to get grounded and balanced in energy. We get out of the ether, we get back into the body. Just one more breath here. And then we'll go ahead, we'll release that. We're gonna come on to our bellies. So you wanna really be facing your screen or move your screen in any way that helps you look straight into the screen. We're gonna use a couple of yen poses here near the end of our class that allows us to relax some of the spaces that get really tight through our day. And this first place I am is called Sphinx. And this, we've got lots of options, so I'm gonna to toss these out here in just a minute. So I might start with elbow right underneath shoulder, but I might recognize that that's way too pinchy in my low back. And if that's the case, I send my elbows a little further away so I get more of my rib cage on, and I can cross my arms and rest my head. There may be a few of you where this is simply not accessible because of how your back is feeling today. So you might just be resting on your belly with your head comfortable on the floor. For those of us in Sphinx, elbows underneath shoulders, we're gonna allow our head to relax. And we can do that in a couple of ways. I can either clasp my fist and rest my chin to stretch the front of my neck, or I can rest my head in my hands while I'm resting here. So we do wanna support the head tonight. The legs are gonna be at least as far away as your mat. They might be further depending on your hip structure. The reason we send those legs wide is it's really hard for your body to hold tension in your low back or buns the further away your legs get. We're gonna hold this pose for two minutes. Now typically, if you've taken yin with me or done yin before, we're holding stuff for three to five minutes. Tonight, we're really just looking to stretch this front side of the body to open up some of those spaces that have been closed down throughout your day. And to give a sense of ease in that low back for anybody who works with sciatic pain or sciatica, this is one of the poses that's highly recommended to help alleviate that sciatic pain. As we're resting here, as soon as we become still, and this is maybe just how we're built, our brain loves to start running away from all of this and to tune out. So I'm gonna ask you to tune in and to tune into your breath, where you're breathing in and counting the number of beats it takes you to breathe in and you're exhaling out, counting the number of beats it takes you to exhale out. There's no right or wrong answer. We're just noticing how many beats do I breathe in? How many beats do I breathe out for about the next minute?
we're going to begin to shift into child's pose. For those of us who don't enjoy child's pose, it doesn't feel very relaxing to you, go ahead and flip over to your back and draw your knees into your chest. So you can rest on your back with knees into chest. You can also shift yourself back so your hips are towards your heels. We'll reach the arms, head is resting. So if head doesn't quite get to the floor and you do have a yoga block handy, go ahead and use your yoga block. You can always stack your fists. Two minutes in child's pose. This restorative pose, this energetically restoring pose. My invitation to you here is to notice the breath in the sense of expansion. So for most of us, we have a little pressure on our bellies. And as you breathe in, do you see or notice if it can go into the side body or into the back body? Now we're not trying to necessarily manipulate it, we're just noticing. As I breathe in, where do I expand into? As I breathe out, is there a sense of ease or release that comes with that exhale? Breathing into expansion. Exhaling into release. When you're ready, we're going to begin, for those of us in child's pose, to first come in tabletop and maybe rock a little side to side. If you're resting on your back, you may want to rock those knees side to side. We're going to come to rest on our back for everyone. So shifting to your back when you're ready. And again, just positioning that screen in a way that allows you to see if you need to. As you come to your back, allow your arms to go out into a T. So resting on your back, arms out into a T. We're gonna let our knees drop over to the right side. So letting knees stack one on top of the other, a gentle twist tonight, <coughs> pardon me, Arms out into a T and we may add the head. So if you would like to do a double twist in that spine, you've got knees to the right. Lift your head, look over your left shoulder and then rest your head on the floor. So knees to the right, gaze to the left. Perhaps take a deep inhale and a big whooshing exhale out the mouth this ringing out, this letting go of what no longer serves you from your day, what no longer serves you energetically in the body. An opportunity to invite new things in, whatever those new things may be for you. Maybe it's new oxygen, new nutrients flowing more freely through the body. Maybe we've gotten a balance in the energetic system of the body and we can sense that energy is flowing more freely. 
Maybe we're inviting in this moment to be present, to preserve how we may be feeling in this moment, perhaps more at ease, a bit more relaxed, the mind slightly more quiet. What is it that you want to invite in? And what is it that you would like to let go of? We inhale to invite in, and we exhale to let go of what no longer serves us. Moving gently, we begin to bring the head back towards the ceiling or a gaze towards the ceiling, knees back towards center. Give yourself a moment maybe to rock side to side here in center. We'll move to the other side when you're ready. Knees drop over to the left side. Knees are gently stacked. Arms, maybe T, maybe there's another place then you'd like to place those arms resting on your rib cage, reaching overhead. If you'd like to add that double twist to your spine and your neck allows, lift the head, look over your right shoulder and then rest the head. So we have knees dropping to the left, gaze going to the right. A nice deep inhale and longer exhale. Bringing out your day's work. Bringing out what no longer serves you. Inviting in what you would like to fill you up. Bringing knees back through center, gaze back through center. Letting knees come in towards chest, hanging on behind thighs or shins, giving a little rock side to side. We're gonna finish class here in relaxation. And I did this uh, the other day too. And it can be somewhat interesting here on the video screen. But having gained some of this relaxation and ease in the body, I hate to bring you out of it if you would like to hang out in it for a while. So I'm going to send you through a few little ideas about relaxing. I'm going to be quiet for about a minute and then I will quietly end the meeting. I am available to anybody via email or text. If you have questions, a few of you are on my Facebook as well. Shoot me anything you would like through those since we are not going to have a chance to talk at the end of class. So the invitation at the end of my classes is to find a space for yourself that feels relaxing. That might be resting on your back with your feet about as wide as your mat, your palms up and traveling away from your hips. For others, it might be resting on your side, resting on your belly. If you have a wall available, you may wanna have legs up the wall tonight or a couch where you place those feet on. That's a nice, easy, relaxing pose for that back. So letting yourself come into the space that feels like at this moment can bring the most ease into the body. Take that deep inhale, breathing in as fully as you can. And as you exhale, imagine that exhale settling into the weight of the body where it's connected to the floor or the earth. One more of those, a deep inhale. And that longer exhale.
And allowing now the body to breathe itself. No effort to breath. We invite the mind to quiet. And perhaps that invitation looks a little bit more like longer pauses between thoughts. We let go of all of the doing of our day. And we invite ourselves to just simply be to be resting here in a sense of ease, perhaps a sense of well-being, to be resting here in ease and well-being for as long as you choose tonight. 